neurons, 7,500 sinuses. Sinuses connect the neurons. Look at rat, 200 million neurons, 100 million. So rat is not bad, 200 million neurons and 100 million sinuses. Human being, of course, much more about 100 million neurons and 100 million sinuses. Now, what is interesting, look at this round of chain and two neurons. We have been able to put this into Lego machine. That means the brain of that round worm is on this Lego machine. It starts to behave like a round worm. And actually, you can go and do this project yourself. There's an open world project. You can download the software from the internet. You can put it on your thing. You can take a Lego toy and put it on that. Now, does it mean that's a stupid thing? 302 neurons versus 100 million neurons? How can we do this? But 80% of human beings and this round world has the same genes. So it's not all that different. It's a simple form of complex life that human being is. So today if we can do a round worm, tomorrow it should be possible to download the human brain onto a computer and then what we say it will be starting a digital immortality. That means while our physical body gives up, our brain is transferred to computer, we remain alive through computers. This is called digital immortality. So are we going towards that? Trying to simulate human brain to supercomputers is not so easy. To simulate one second of human brain took 40 minutes of fastest supercomputers, 83,000 processors, nearly 80 megawatt, 100 megawatt power, and so on, and huge amount of memory. But new developments happen when brain is part computers coming in. But actually, I'll give out the details here. But in three years, from 256 neurons to 1 million neurons, and 256 million synapses, and this about 4,000 neuroscience cores. The IBM has developed this. In three years, they've come three hours of magnitude. Come to a situation where they're planning that they would have processors which have 10 million neurons, or 10% of human brains, and 100% of synapses. Which means that through this, they're giving very less power. It's like a watch battery. So, human brain can use very little power. The supercomputer that initially they tried can use 80 megawatt of power. It's almost like a lighting up a whole town. But these are consuming very less power. It may become possible that once we have this in hand, that the way computers are not able to duplicate us in our vision capability or hearing capability, we will have computers doing that task as well as human beings. Some of you, like myself, have less memory. It's possible that actually you can put a additional memory, human pro memory prosthetics is happening. Next few years it will be available. And robot scientists are coming up, which will actually, I'll just finish in a couple of minutes. Robot scientists are coming up, which actually started to discover very rare drugs which are not possible by human beings. You can see the robots like this coming to supermarket and everybody is looking at it. But is it scary to the top scientist thinkers who are talking about this, that we need to worry about this, this may, they may take us over. Stephen Hawking talking about, Elon Musk talking about, and so on. The last part of this is that can machines become conscious? Now, this is the crucial part where science and spirituality differ. In this finish, consciousness is bridge between science and spirituality. So, you see a lot of scientists when they work on that, at the end of their life, they start talking about spirituality. You can machines be conscious? I will leave out the details here, but say that their thoughts are divided in this. There is a group who say that yes. You can duplicate everything in the human brain, put it in the computer, it will become conscious. There's a group, we say that it's not possible, it's something that is outside this. So, this is a division that is there, we are not sure, but the next 20, 30 years we'll come to know whether that machines can become conscious. So, some of the questions, I don't want to answer questions, I just want to pose questions for you to think. Can computers overtake us? Can we become digitally mortal? Can consciousness be imparted to computer? Should we worry about cognition enhanced, enhancing drugs? Would modifying brain with technology lead to large scale misuse of this? Uh, but can it also help in improving our own brain? These are some of the questions that you can think about it. My own take on some of this is that just like mobile and computers have become extended part of it. Today, for example, I don't remember phone numbers. It is in my mobile. If I lose my mobile, my phone numbers are all gone. Earlier we used to remember when we used to dial, we will remember all the phones. So part of our brain has already moved. So similarly, the brain will get connected to larger resources of computers and network and vice versa. So we'll have a network of brains and computers which will give us capabilities unthinkable now, but it could be prone to misuse and we need to be careful about this. So I'll stop at this point. Thank you. I would like to ask for any 
questions from the audience? Your work definitely inspires us and I would like to say that you definitely embrace the concept of Make in India. And I hope it will inspire the youngsters present here to move towards a better India tomorrow. Now I would like to call upon our director to facilitate Professor Ranjan with a small moment. Thanks a lot, sir. I would now like to call upon Professor G.P. Das to give his vote of thanks. Thank you. I'm sure you'll all agree that uh, Professor Prabhat Ranjan has given us an absolutely amazing start of this two-day program. Now, I would like to uh, uh, give you a very brief uh, outline of the program, the way we are, we are planning it uh, out, that uh, uh, after, after this uh, program, in the, uh, in the after tea session, we are going to have a small video clip on uh, IACS, which will be followed by an extraordinary documentary video on environment and global warming. In fact, you just now heard that we think less about air and more about food, just now Professor Ranjan mentioned. So you will see how the uh, you know, environment uh, is, uh, so is, is extremely important to us through this movie, which is known as a 2006 movie, An Inconvenient uh, Truth by Al Gore. Uh, uh, which is specifically designed to educate the audience and help them to re-explore their assumptions about environment and take an active role as individuals by changing their behavior and informing other people about climate change. That's what is important for especially the young children in the audience. Tomorrow, there will be another such video show on natural selection, a classic documentary uh, on Charles Darwin's mystery. That will be tomorrow. We have a number of lectures uh, covering a variety of areas of excitement in science and mathematics that are going to be delivered at a popular level by several eminent speakers during these two days. Today, we will listen to a talk by Professor Amit Bashak of IIT Kharagpur entitled Excitement in Chemistry Through Molecules. So, I am sure you will all be looking forward to this exciting lecture today in the afternoon. Tomorrow, there will be a talk by Dr. Bhupati Chakravarti, an ex-professor of City College, Kolkata, and now intimately associated with the Indian Association of Physics Teachers, who is going to talk on physics in the sporting arena. How you can improve your skill in cricket or pole vault by knowing some basic uh, principles of physics is going to be exciting for the children. And then, uh, another lecture by Dr. Chimai Ghosh of IGNO, Delhi, who is going to talk about mathematics, the queen and servant of science. The last talk will be given by our colleague Professor Shomitra Shengupto of our theoretical physics department on gravitational wave about which I am sure you have all uh, seen in the, in the newspapers and in the television about the latest discovery uh, uh, which uh, that I mean this gravitational wave that was predicted in the early part of 20th century by none other, none other than the man of the century Albert Einstein. Many of you must have seen in the newspaper as well as in the YouTube about the discovery and on the ubiquitous gravitational wave via the merger of two huge black holes ringing down to a single black hole. An amazing cosmic extravaganza that exactly matches the prediction of general theory of relativity of Albert Einstein. Now we go to the world of experiments that is going to be shown in the afternoons of today as well as tomorrow. And uh, uh, we are going to move uh, to the adjoining campus. Uh, you will see where there is a huge pandal which has been erected with several stalls where the students of our ISCS, the PhD students, will take you through a guided tour of live experimental demonstrations of physics, chemistry and biology. And the afternoon session today will start with a lucid and exciting classroom type demonstration by 
uh, one of our senior, esteemed senior colleague, uh, Professor B. N. Das, uh, why tomorrow afternoon we are going to have another session by Dr. Bhugati Chakravarti. Apart from this, we have a mobile van from Bilda Institute of Technological Museum to show you a variety of live demonstrations. And for the senior students from colleges who are present here today and as well as tomorrow, we have also arranged some visits to some of the state-of-the-art laboratories of our institute, which has been arranged by my colleagues. So this is the summary of the two-day uh, program that we have talked out. Of course, I must add that food is an integral part of such a program, and we have made no exception to this. My colleagues have ensured that the students, volunteers, and participants all enjoy the lunch and the refreshments that have been arranged in our campus. My appeal to the young students is that you please maintain discipline and follow the instructions of your teachers and of the volunteers who will help you. Finally, I uh, uh, will have to uh, thank uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, agencies and uh, personalities without whose help it would not have been possible for us to have this uh, today program. First of all, I would like to thank the Government of India, especially our Honorable Prime Minister, for choosing the theme for this year's National Science Day, which you have already seen. Made in India. I would like to thank DST for funding. Generously, I will say. The, I, I, would, I, I would like to mention that the, the guiding force behind the entire uh, program that you are seeing is uh, our beloved director, uh, Professor Shantanu Bhattacharya, for all kinds of support, guidance, and ideas. I have already thanked Professor Prabhat Ranjan, but I would like to mention, thank you, sir, for such a wonderful beginning of our today program. We are truly indebted for this. I would like to express my thanks to Vigyan Bharati for uh, uh, bringing their distinguished delegates and all the distinguished speakers and guests. No such function would have been successful without the participation of the students. So I would like to thank all the schools and colleges who send their students and uh, uh, for their endeavor in, in making uh, this entire process a success. Bidla Industrial and Technological Museum, as well as the uh, uh, Science City, in particular the director, Dr. K.D. Choudhury, must be thanked for their immense help that they have rendered. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the organizing committee and all the subcommittees who have worked relentlessly for the past couple of uh, days and weeks in order to ensure that this particular program becomes a success. I would like to thank all the volunteers, all our colleagues, students, and in particular, our staff members in the workshop, our engineers, and our cleaning personnel. With that, I would like to bring this particular morning session to a, uh, to a close, and I would request all of you uh, to, uh, to have a cup of tea, which is waiting outside. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Please sit down. We would like to welcome you back for the second session of the first day of our celebrations. We will start by showing you a small clip on ISCS. <laughs> Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science is the oldest scientific research institute in India. This institute, known as IACS, was founded by a medical doctor, Mah Mah Mahindra Lal Sadar. Around 1869, Mohindralal started writing about his dream project, the establishment of an Indian research institute. He was supported by Isha Chandrovin Kashagur, who was the first donor and the first trustee of IACS. 
Green Chandra Jot Pantai wrote a big article supporting Mahindradar in Bodhna Vashu in 1872. RECS was founded on the 29th of July 1876 at 210 Bodhna Street. C.B. Raman was born in Tamil Nadu on 7th of November 1888. Raman also stood first in Indian Financial Service Examination. In 1907, three years after Mahindralal's death, C. V. Raman came to Calcutta. Initially, Raman worked on acoustics, particularly Indian musical instruments. He started working on Brahman effect from 1923. He did not have any equipment. He approached G.D. Burla for money to buy a spectrograph. Brahman sent his paper by telegram to Nature on 16th of February 1928. He was awarded the 1930 Nobel Prize in Physics. Keeping in tune with past legacy, ISS continues to... areas relevant to society. You look at that river gently flowing by. You notice the leaves rustling with the wind. You hear the birds. You hear the tree frogs. In the distance you hear a cow. You feel the grass. The mud gives a little bit on the river bank. It's quiet. It's peaceful. And all of a sudden, it's a gear shift inside you. And it's like taking a deep breath and going, Oh yeah, I forgot about this.
This is uh, the first picture of the Earth from space that any 